Working with geolocations and geospatial data is essential for building urban digital twins. You can now precisely place locations in Unreal Engine using the geospatial plugin Cesium and go much further with this. I will go through how to take a list of addresses and do some geocoding to get the longitude and latitudes and then this can be loaded into a data table in Unreal and with blueprints visualized accurately with Google Maps 3D tiles. This is a great starting point to then work further with other geodata sources and mapping them visually. I will be using a level I made using the plugin Cesium. So if you don't know how to create a scene like this, please take a look at my previous video. But before we do that, we will need a list of locations and the longitude and latitude coordinates. You can get the longitude and latitude in both Google Maps and OpenStreetMaps by clicking on a location individually. But in case you have a list of addresses and not these coordinates, I'll quickly show you how to get these as it can also be useful in other workflows too. I've created a short Python script to geocode locations. I won't go through this in too much detail as I'll focus more on the Unreal Engine part. But if you go to the Urban Decoders GitHub link below, which you can access freely, in this code, you only need to change the name and addresses of your locations. To run this code, you could do it in any IDE or a simple way to do it is just to download this file, upload it to your Google Drive, and here you can open it with Google Colab. If you don't know what Google Colab is, it essentially allows anybody to write and execute Python code through the browser. If you don't have this installed, just go to the Google Workplace Market and do it through there. With that installed, if you open the Python file from your Google Drive with Colab, to execute code, we just need to hit this arrow button on each of the blocks. So you could do it on the first one. And on the second one, this is the only area you need to edit. So you can enter the name and addresses here, which you want to geocode. You can of course change this code to allow an automatic upload of your addresses from an Excel sheet to read it. But to keep it simple, I've just let you manually type it in here. If you press the arrow button on the second block to run it, and then you can do the same on the third, which just saves out the file as a CSV. This file is only temporarily saved, so to find it, go to the tab on the left, press the folder icon, and you see this geocoded CSV file. So click this here and download. If you open the file in Excel, you'll see that we have nicely these two extra columns for the longitude and latitude. So here I've done exactly the same by running the code, but I added 15 addresses in total. The only extra thing I've done here in Excel is I've added a column with a number for each row as a unique ID, as sometimes it can cause issues if you don't have one when you bring it into Unreal. Now we have all the data we need. Back in Unreal, you should have the Season plugin installed and the Google Maps tiles loaded if you watched the previous tutorial. Just a reminder that it is a good idea to change the location of your georeference up here to one of your listed addresses so that when the data is loaded, we know if it is correct. So enter one of the latitude and longitude coordinates over here. Before we drop our CSV file into here, we need to make a structure for the data to come in. In the content drawer, right click anywhere, go to blueprints and click structure. Then give it a suitable name and double click to open it up. Here you need to add a variable for each of the columns of data you want to bring in. So here from the Excel, you can see we have name, address, longitude and latitude. Really, we actually only need the longitude and latitude. However, this other data may be useful for future tutorials. We could then press this add variable button four times and rename them to name, address, latitude, and longitude. In the second column, we want to change the data types for the name and addresses from Boolean 
the string. And then for the longitude and latitude, we will change it to float since they have a decimal point value. With that, we can go back to a content draw and drag and drop a CSV file here. It will ask you for a data table row type, which we will select a newly made structure file. We can press apply to all, and if we find that data table, double click to open it up, you will find the Unreal compatible data table correctly organized. You can select each of the rows of data entry and see all the data for each location, which we will be extracting in our blueprints. We will need to add one more asset as we would like to have some kind of marker or pin for the location. You can make your own or use any shape. In the description below, I have added a link for the pin that I made. So you can download this and drag and drop this into the content drawer as well. You can keep these default import options. I will also keep the create new materials option and just press import. You will find the mesh and one material generated. If you double click the material, you can go over to the color palette and change to whichever color you desire. To save, go back, and you see the pin color change as well. Finally, we need one simple blueprint script to bring this all together. Right click in the content drawer, go to blueprints, and select actor. I will save it as BP underscore geolocator, and double click it to open. The blueprint layout may vary depending on your setup, but you should have a viewport here to see the 3D and then a tab for the event graph. This is where you write your scripts that will only run when you click the play button here. And then here is the construction script tab, which we will be using. So here, any script we write will run outside of the play button. First, we will want to import our values from the data table. So if you drag off from the white pin to get started and type in get data, select get data table column as string. For the data table drawdown, select our geocoded addresses data table. And here there's the property names. So we can list any of the columns we like. So let's start with latitude. Right click here on the return value and select promote to variable. This essentially saves all the latitude values in a variable over here on the left panel, so we can just access it later whenever needed. We then repeat this process for the longitude. So drag off from the white pin, select get data table column a string, select our geocoded addresses data table, and the property name will be longitude. Then right click on the return value and promote the variable as well. We now have all the column values, but we need to access each of these rows individually. We can drag off with the white pin and select get data table row names this time. Select the data tables and then save out the row names as a variable as well. Since we are dealing with rows here, in my example, there are 15. We need to loop over all of these and access each value. To do this in blueprints, we will do this by dragging off here and selecting a for each loop component. And then also connect up the row names array here. What we want to save out from here are the array indexes. Back in the data table, each of these rows will have an index starting from 0 up to 14, which is associated with each row. We can right-click the array index and then promote this to a variable as well. You can see here on the panel that the data type is an integer, as there will always be whole numbers. Let's connect up the white pin from the loop body. Now with the indexes saved, 
you can get out the individual values for all the longitude and latitude columns. We can simply drag out this value from the left panel like so, and then select Get for both of these. To match up each row index with the columns here, we can drag out from the latitude array and select Get Copy. Make sure the context checkbox is ticked here. They connect the index array to the get. What happens here is that when the script loops through the row names and gets the index, it will get each latitude and value as well. So we can repeat this process for the longitude. So get a copy and connect the same index array so that they both match. With this, we can loop through and access all the longitude and latitude values in order. However, we need to still convert these values to the Unreal system and work with our Cesium GeoReference system. Luckily, there's one simple component to do this all for us. Double click anywhere and type in transform longitude. Uncheck the context checkbox up here on the top right. And you can select this top option. If you right click the longitude and latitude height pin and select split pin structure, we can now individually connect up the X, Y, and Z values. The longitude relates to the X value and the latitude to the Y value. Z is related to the height, so how high we want our icon off from the train. Remember, Unreal uses centimeters, so here I will just put 200 for now. We will also add the cesium georeference as our target system. So drag off from the white pin, select Get Actor Class, and type cesium georeference. and connect up the return value. With this now, we can spawn our 3D icons or pins into the scene at all these coordinates. Drag off from the white pin here and select Add Instance. On the Instance Transform, right click and split the Structure pin this way, we can connect the Unreal position to the instance transform location. We can also set the rotation and scale, but we will leave that for now. As for the target to spawn, we will want to use that imported FBX, or actually any object you have modeled. To add these objects, over here on the bottom left panel, there is a components tab and a small green plus button. So press this and type instance to get an instance static mesh. I will rename this to pin. And over in the details panel on the right, you can see in the static mesh section, we can select any mesh we would like to be spawned. I will select my imported location pin. You can also change the material here too. If you drag out this pin component onto the blueprints, you can connect it to the target and we can spawn this instance. The advantage of this method is that we can quickly replace any mesh in this component with another object if we wish to change it quickly in the future. I will also just change the scale here to 100 as I know that my imported FBX is very small and we will want it to be seen here. So let's compile, go back to the main level, and you'll see here that nothing has changed. This is because the blueprints need to be dragged into the scene to take effect. So let's just do that. It can be just dragged in anywhere. And on the location transform, press this reset button here to bring it to zero, zero, zero. And just like that, all our pins are spawned at the correct coordinates. I know they are correct, 
as I deliberately chose a location here to confirm this place. We can go back and tweak the values as needed to change the size and height of the pins. So we might want to lower this pin as well a bit. I will drag out this blueprint window so we can see our changes live. I will expand this out a bit so we can see more of the nodes. And here let's change the height to 100 and press compile. Because we are using the construction graph, not the event graph, we can see the instant result. I will also change the transform scale here and double it up to 200 and press compile. You can also change the rotation here if you like. This is just the first step in incorporating geospatial data into your Unreal apps. Other steps could include clickable events that have data such as the name and address appear. You can also add pins to make them spin and add UIs to toggle them on and off. You can even create travel distance analysis between locations. Once we start bringing in our architectural designs with the metadata, the apps can really start becoming more intelligent and help inform our built environment. I'll be exploring a few more of these themes in future videos, so let me know in the comments below if there's specific ones you are interested in. Otherwise, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.